NASA's big announcement on Boeing Starliner return. Yes, it's returning. Yesterday's Falcon 9 launch. Hey, I'm Lucas. Welcome to the SpaceX community. Let's get started. In today's episode, we're going to discuss about the recent incident at the International Space Station, ISS. While this situation was somewhat serious, it was managed effectively with precautionary measures. We'll also touch on our hottest topic, the Starliner spacecraft. Despite facing numerous technical challenges recently, it played a crucial role in supporting the astronauts. This development is encouraging given the spacecraft's recent issues. So let's jump in and see what happened and how the situation was addressed. On June 26th, a notable incident occurred on the International Space Station. ISS, involving nine astronauts who had to briefly relocate to their docked return spacecraft due to the fragmentation of a satellite in low Earth orbit. The Expedition 71 crew, which includes occupants on the ISS, undertook this precautionary measure shortly after 9 p.m. EDT, as detailed by NASA in a brief update on X, formerly Twitter. This movement likely disrupted the astronauts' sleep schedule given the ISS adheres to a time zone equivalent to GMT, aligning with the European Space Agency's operational timeline. The astronauts' temporary relocation was strictly a safety protocol, and they were cleared to return to the ISS after approximately an hour, allowing the space station to resume its normal operations. NASA did not immediately identify the satellite responsible for the incident, but LEO Labs, a satellite monitoring and collision detection firm, reported a debris-generating event around the same time. Early indications pointed to the non-operational Russian satellite Resurs P1, Satno 39186, as the source of the fragments. The US Space Command corroborated this by noting the generation of over 100 pieces of trackable debris, but observed no immediate threats continuing with routine conjunction assessments, a conjunction referring to a close approach between two objects in orbit. The Resurs P-1 satellite, launched on June 25, 2013, had been in operation until December 2021, surpassing its expected operational lifespan. It was primarily used for Earth observation tasks, spanning from defense and emergency monitoring to agricultural applications. The fragmentation of Resurs P-1 underscores a growing concern about space debris in orbit. The North American Aerospace Defense Command, NORAD, is currently tracking more than 45,300 space objects, with Spacetrack.org providing real-time data. This figure does not account for the numerous non-trackable pieces. Furthermore, the Union of Concerned Scientists lists 7,560 operational satellites orbiting Earth, which starkly contrasts the substantial number of uncontrollable non-operational satellites. NASA, in collaboration with the US military, actively monitors the vicinity around the ISS to mitigate collision risks. The station is designed to maneuver, if time permits, to avoid trackable debris of roughly two inches in size that might enter a zone surrounding its orbit. This zone extends approximately 2.5 by 30 by 30 miles, with the ISS at the center. Standard NASA procedures also involve astronauts seeking shelter in their return spacecraft if a significant hazard arises, albeit the probability remains statistically low. A historical parallel can be drawn to November 2021, when Russia's deliberate destruction of a satellite during an anti-satellite test necessitated a similar safety protocol, an act that garnered international condemnation. While the recent NASA update did not clarify how close the satellite debris approached the ISS, LEO Labs reported the debris was released between 9.05 a.m. EDT and 8.51 p.m. EDT on June 26. This incident highlights the ongoing risks and procedural responses related to space debris, reflecting concerns about the operational integrity of the ISS and its crew's safety. The event also brought attention to the Boeing Starliner spacecraft, part of a more than three-week-long crew flight test mission, initially planned to last only 10 days. Currently, the Starliner is on a test mission with two astronauts and is prepared for an emergency departure if needed. 
This situation places additional focus on Starliner amidst ongoing reviews and testing of its thruster systems and helium supply. Problems identified on June 6 with these systems have led to a pending decision on the spacecraft's nominal departure date. Meanwhile, NASA Starliner astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams have continued with ISS maintenance duties following the testing, according to NASA updates on the Space Station blog. NASA had projected that the Starliner would depart sometime after July 2nd, following an anticipated spacewalk on that date. However, a coolant leak that occurred on June 24th led to a postponement of the spacewalk, pending further reviews of procedures and the affected spacesuit. Boeing and NASA officials have remarked that developmental missions like Starliner often encounter delays due to unforeseen circumstances, underscoring the inherent unpredictability of such ventures. During an unrelated teleconference about future launches for United Launch Alliance's ULA New Vulcan Centaur rocket, ULA CEO Tori Bruno provided a positive update on the Starliner situation. He affirmed that the Starliner crew, both former U.S. Navy test pilots accustomed to developmental programs, are safe and sound. Bruno reassured that despite the helium leaks reported in the news, the issue is stable with a substantial reserve of helium on board the Starliner, eliminating any urgency for their return. He emphasized that the ISS is well stocked with supplies, allowing the crew to continue their mission without immediate concerns. Bruno also noted that, aside from one thruster that will remain shut off during undocking, the other 27 in the reaction control system are still operational. Out of the five thrusters that exhibited anomalies during docking, Issues with four have largely resolved, leaving only one offline. In conclusion, the recent precautionary relocation of the ISS crew due to space debris from the fragmented Reser's P-1 satellite illustrates the ongoing challenges and safety measures associated with space missions. It highlights the collaborative monitoring efforts by NASA and the US military to ensure the safety of the ISS and its crew. This incident, alongside the ongoing developments with the Boeing Starliner spacecraft, underscores the dynamic and often unpredictable nature of space exploration and the continuous need for vigilance and adaptability in the face of potential hazards. Just a quick update. Our community is on the verge of hitting 50,000 subscribers. We're one of the fastest growing space news media channels, bringing you all the latest on SpaceX and everything space related. Join us now and be part of this incredible milestone. Don't miss out on future updates. Subscribe today. SpaceX achieved a significant milestone in its reusability mission with the successful launch of 23 Starlink Internet satellites to orbit. The launch took place at 7.14 a.m. EDT from Space Launch Complex 40, SLC-40, at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida, utilizing a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. Aboard the rocket was a batch of 23 Starlink spacecraft, which are set to join the company's vast mega-constellation of broadband internet satellites. This launch marked a notable achievement for SpaceX, as it represented the first time an individual Falcon 9 rocket had launched and landed 22 times. The company celebrated this feat on social media, posting, Falcon 9 lands on the Just Read the Instructions drone ship, completing the first 20-second launch and landing of a booster. The mission unfolded smoothly, with the rocket's second stage separating from the Falcon 9 booster at 2 minutes and 34 seconds into the flight. The first stage booster then returned to Earth, landing safely on SpaceX's Just Read the Instructions drone ship, which was stationed offshore in the Atlantic Ocean. The landing occurred just 8 minutes and 14 seconds into the mission, demonstrating the impressive capabilities of the Falcon 9 rocket. SpaceX confirmed the successful deployment of the 23 Starlink satellites approximately an hour after takeoff. This brings the total number of Starlink satellites in orbit to over 6,000, including both operational and non-operational satellites. The Starlink constellation is designed to provide high-speed, low-latency internet connectivity to remote and underserved communities around the world. Thanks for watching today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for another great video tomorrow.